Hi guys, in this tutorial we're talking about compression. And in simple terms, compression is an algorithm that takes some data in and reduces its size. And we'll see how we can achieve that in Java. So let's call it compression main. And let's add our entry point. So if you think about it, data can be represented at the lowest level as an array of bytes. Or at least that's how we can represent that in Java. So suppose we have this static method, which we're going to improve into an interface, but for now we're keeping things simple. So we return bytes uh, and we also take the bytes in. And we can call this compress. This is going to be our data. So if we restate that, uh, restate the compression algorithm in terms of Java syntax, then it would be a method that takes an array of bytes and returns an array of bytes, uh, preferably with smaller size. And in that compressed method, we can do something with this original um, array of bytes. And then similarly, we can have decompress. I suppose we'll get rename this to compressed data, so it's clearer. But in terms of the method, method signature, they're both the same. And Java provides some built-in um, classes and methods for that, which is really nice. And to do that, we will need a byte output, uh, byte array output stream, so that we can write to it. Uh, and then we'll need one of the built-in implementations of compression, which is called deflator output stream. which takes our um, array output stream. So we can then write uh, through deflator to our underlying um, output stream. Uh, yeah, there will be any exceptions. So just say something like error, I guess. It's not, exception handling isn't part of the tutorial, so I'm just going to skip this. Uh, and to make the compiler happy, we'll do this. But the most important bit is going to be in here. So we have our deflator um, output stream, and anything we write through it is going to compress um, the stuff that we're writing. And currently we're interested in writing the entire array of bytes. And by just doing this, it's going to write to this thing, and we're going to finish writing because we don't have any more data to process. So at this point, we have all of our data. Um, think of this as a filter. It filters our original data into compressed data and then writes into this thing. And now we just need to get this um, back, which returns an array of bytes. And decompress is actually very similar. So we might as well just copy and paste this. Instead of deflator output stream, you would use inflator output stream. Which is the same thing, but in reverse. So what we're saying is, um, this is the underlying output stream to which we're writing. This is the filter that will take compressed data and read uh, or convert into uncompressed form or decompressed form. Everything else is pretty much the same. So we can start writing our high level app. Let's get our original um, data. Let's see what we can use here. I've got so many files. Um, tmp.txt. Yeah, I'll just use one of the text files from a previous tutorial. What you can do is just create a text file and then just populate with some stuff. Files read all bytes uh, paths get tmp.txt. And then that throws an exception. So I'll just say that main throws an exception. But the file is there and it will find it. And it's really nice because you can use it doesn't have to be a text file because any kind of file can be represented as a byte array or um, Java can read it as a byte array. So it's very generic what we're doing. 
So we've got our original bytes. What do we want to do? We want to compress them. Compress, call compress on the original. And then we want to, well, we're curious about the size. So original size is this. And compressed size, you can also figure out um, the ratio as well, if you're interested, to know how um, successful, I guess, the compression was, or how effective it was. And then, well, we kind of want to know if we can decompress it. Um, decompressed is decompress on compressed. And then we want to check if this byte array is exactly the same as that one. Because if not, then we, we lost some data basically, and we don't want that, or at least not with, it, with this type of compression. Uh, well, there's a, a handy method for that, arrays um, equals. Pass one of the arrays and then the other one. So we're essentially saying, if they're equal, then print true. If they're not, print false. I think that's about it. Let's give that a go. So you can see down here, original size is about 40,000 bytes and compressed size is 272 bytes. It's probably a lot of repetition. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing over and over again, which is why it compressed so well. And we can see that it's true as in the compression was lossless. Uh, what we compressed, we also got back in exactly the same format. Right, so at this point, the major part of the tutorial is done. Now what we're going to do is try and make this a bit cleaner um, in terms of how, how you would actually use it in not necessarily production quality code, but somewhere in between. Let's go for an interface. A compressor is going to be our interface and a compressor can do two things. It can compress, it can decompress. So what we're going to do is essentially take this signature out here without the static. And I guess you don't really need public. So that's your compress method signature and decompress is exactly the same. Compress state. Now we've made this um, quite a bit generic or in a way that um, you can use multiple compressors. And we're also going to implement our simple compressor using what we've done before, which implements a compressor. And the idea will even fill in the methods. So we'll go back here. I'm going to take this into compress. I'm going to take that into decompress. And that's it. No longer need these. And we no longer need these imports. But we do need to create something here. So what we're going to call um, is compressor. New simple compressor. This is how we instantiate uh, it to our concrete simple compressor implementation. And the cool stuff about this is if you implement a different compressor, all you need to do is just change this one line or half of a line, and then everything everything else is going to just work as is. So we made this a bit more generic and it will work. I'm not going to run this even. So how we go at adding one other compressor type and just playing around with it. There are a few more built-in implementations of um, compression algorithms in the JDK. So just Google them uh, and then use them in a very similar way. Last thing I'm going to do is add a GUI on top of this. Suppose we have compression main as our starting point. I'm going to extend a JavaFX application. It's going to give me 
start to alright let's put this down here just use the main being down here now set scene create content which we're going to do in a minute show yeah that'll do uh, I'll keep this here for now. So in terms of content, well, we're going to just have a single button and that button is going to perform something. Stack pane is going to be our root. Set preferred size 800 by 600 and there's somewhere in the middle is going to be a button which does something on press. Set an action root get children add uh, button yep that should be good um, let's just run this actually no we can't run this because it's not hooked up yet anyway um button well we want to be able to choose files let's go with file chooser that way you can just play around with this by choosing any file you want and it'll compress it and as an extension to this task, you can even uh, make that compressed byte array um, written to the file system. And there you go, you have an, a utility that you can actually use. File chooser um, set initial directory. New file, um, where does the user start? I think it's so system get property user dir, um, which is the proper, which is the directory where the program is running. And then show open dialog. Yeah, I think that, that's what we're looking for. And then the window is, well, it's nullable, let's go open null. I guess that's, yeah, if you want to pass in a window to create a model type dialog, you can. You can. Um, file, I guess, is the chosen file. So if file is not null, null being the, the user didn't choose anything, that file is, well, we're going to read it. Read all bytes of that file. These checked exceptions, man, they're going to. destroy your workflow one day and try read all bytes into well this thing and everything else kind of follows from it and then we no longer have hard-coded file to read and compress you can clean this up a little bit more but I'm going to just leave it as is and Last thing is to call launch on our application. We should see a button somewhere in the middle. We can press. We can select one of the files as such as that one. Original size 22k, compressed 6k. Not bad. And good news is it decompressed it just fine. I don't think this is necessary because um, it should decompress everything in exactly the same way um, it was in the original format. But I just added it here so we can actually see what's happening. Right, so in this tutorial we covered, um, okay, I shall cover a couple of things. One is how to um, use built-in implementations uh, of compression algorithms. Um, second, I guess, this interface thing um, to make this slightly more generic so you can use with multiple compressors and finally we just kind of slapped a GUI on top of it with a button that opens um, one of the files on your um, file system and compresses it and that note thanks for watching see you in the next video